Hey Concrete fans, my name is Tyler Lay and welcome to another video about Dreamcrete. This time we're going to talk about permeability. If you ever want to have great Dreamcrete, you gotta have great permeability. That's the key to durability, at least one of them. The next thing to check out is your permeability or your fluid penetration because we want to keep these nasties out of our concrete. And one of the great ways to do that is with resistivity. I'm showing two different commercially available devices here that can measure resistivity and they're pretty simple. You put them on the concrete and there's a current that's sent from one side to another and you actually measure the potential or the voltage across the middle two probes. This is the Wenner probe. It's been used in soils forever. We're just applying it to concrete because why not, right? So what does it mean? Well, you get a resistance number out of this. And the higher the resistance it is, it means the harder it was for electrons to go from one side to the other. That means people think that's the harder it is for chemicals to transfer from one side to the other. And this, by and large, isn't a bad assumption. There are some problems with it, but by and large, it gives you pretty good numbers. And we can get all this information in seconds without destroying the sample, which is pretty exciting to a lot of people. So for example, we can have days down here on the x-axis and on the y-axis we have resistivity and we can take these cylinders here with 10% fly ash, 15% fly ash replacement, 20% fly ash replacement, and 25% fly ash replacement there at the top. And the standard deviations are extremely low. And what you can see is there's differences there. Yeah, as you change your mixture, they will have different resistances to electricity and people think they will have resistances to outside fluids that penetrate inside the concrete. And this is really cool because you can just say, hey, I've measured this sample really, really well in the lab. That's the orange line there. And now I have filled sample one and look, they're pretty much the same. I had filled sample four. They're a little bit different. And then I get to filled sample 17 and something is not right something went wrong. So what happened here? Well, you'll find out the mixture at the top was a 0 0.40 water cement ratio. You'll find out the mixture at the bottom was a 0 0.50 water cement ratio. Those were both done in the lab. It looks like the field sample is much closer to the 0.50 than 0 0.40. If that's not what you ordered, if that's not what you wanted, then that is information that is valuable to you. Now, another way to do this is to just test this at one age. So when I break my concrete cylinder to measure the strength, I can zap it right before that and I can say, is it above some limit? There are some challenges with that because not all concrete mixtures perform exactly the same, but that's a very simple and easy. And if you're above the limit, Booyah, you get yourself a thumbs up. There's going to be a more evolved method that you're gonna see eventually come into play called the bucket test. It is everything I just told you about before, using resistivity to zap concrete. You're just going to instead put your concrete into a bucket of salts with a fixed um, solution, fixed concentration of salts, and measured it at fixed ages, and you'll get something called the F factor or the formation factor. It's basically the resistivity of the concrete divided by the resistivity of the solution. Why do you do this? What is it all about? Well, storing it in the salts corrects for all kinds of different things, different weird chemistry things that happen when you use different SCMs in your concrete. The F is a much more direct measure as well to predict the life of the concrete. We're not quite there yet, but we're moving towards the F and the bucket test every single day. So what if you have problems with permeability? Well, there's some simple things you can do to decrease your water to cement ratio, increase your SCM dosage, or use yourself a different SCM, one that may be more efficient or more effective. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. As always, please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Take care, everybody. Bye.